Hello guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to explain about the introduction regarding the arches. So, you know what is the an arch. So, here is the definition. An arch is a simple curved structure. That means the structure will be in the curved shape. Okay. Which resists the loads which are acting on it. So, whatever may be the loads, it may be either point load or uniformly distributed load or uniformly varying load, whatever may be the load. So, whatever the loads which are acting on the structure, it has to be resisted by the arch action. So, an arch is a curved structure. Okay. So, it will be in the curved shape. So, on this structure, there may be various loads. It may be a point load or a UDL. Maybe it may be a point load or UDL or sometimes there may be also uniformly varying load. So, the those loads are to be resisted by the arch action. So, the main advantage of providing an arch is so it can be constructed for larger spans and it is used to resist the heavy loads so arch is capable of resisting heavy loads through the larger spans when comparing when compared to the beams so sometimes it may be uneconomical if we provide beams so beams cannot be provided for larger spans beams are only suitable for providing up to smaller spans but the arches can be provided for larger spans okay if you take bridge as an example the bridge is having longer span at the same time it has to resist the heavy loads okay it is consisting of longer span and it has to resist the heavy loads so in order to resist the heavy loads ordinary beams are not sufficient to resist such heavy loads for longer spans so in such cases we construct the arches so that the larger moments can be resisted by the arch action so due to the arch action the moment developed in the that particular structure is greatly reduced so that if the moment is reduced the size of the section is reduced if size of section is reduced the overall cost and construction is economical so that is the great advantage of providing an arch now coming to the types of arches the arches are mainly classified on the basically four categories the first one is based on shape supports material used and spandrel so coming to the based on shape the arch can be constructed in either parabolic shape, segmental or circular shape or elliptical shape. So each shape has its own geometrical properties. Okay. By using those geometrical properties, we have to analyze the arch. So parabolic, segmental, it is also known as circular arch and elliptical arches. So coming to the supports. So it may be either three hinged, two hinged, tied or fixed. That means it is explaining about the support conditions. So if you see the three hinged arch, so for example, if you take this arch as an example, so there will be one hinged support at this end and there may be another roller or hinged support at, at present, I, for example, I am taking hinged support. So you are having two hinged supports and another hinge at some, somewhere here. So at this point, you may have another support. So total one, two and three. So you are having three hinges in one arch so it will become a three hinged arch so in the three hinged arch the moment at this point will be equal to zero since it is having a hinged support or it is also known as internal hinge and the second one is the two hinged arch so if you take again this arch as an example you will have one support here and another support here and you won't have any support at this point okay there are only two hinges in one arch hence it is known as two hinged arch and it is a tied arch so the ends are tied to each other so that all the arches will act in a uniform uniform manner and next one is the fixed so the ends may be fixed at the fixed supports so instead of hinged supports when coming to the fixed arches the ends are fixed and coming to the materials used so arch can be constructed with either any of the material it may be concrete, steel, timber and masonry. Mostly it is constructed with concrete and steel. Now coming to the spandrel. So the meaning of spandrel is, for example, if you are having an arch in this manner, if I draw one line horizontally at from this point to this point. Okay. Similarly, I am drawing another line here. So if this is an arch, you may have any roadway or railway on, on top of it and the gap here 
the space between the arch okay the space between the arch and this particular uh, way or path is known as the spandrel okay this is this entire areas these two are known as spandrel okay so spandrel may be either open or filled open means there won't be any material filled in these areas okay so again open and filled filled means some material is used to fill these areas okay the space between the arch and the path is filled with some earth material or soil so again the filled uh, the filling material may be either concrete or masonry or soil masonry means you can take any stone masonry or brick masonry or any other material it is filled in this gap so it these are the main classification of Just arches now we have seen the types of arches okay so there may be many more types of arches but the that is the main classification of arches so in those arches i am going to explain these topics okay the first one is three hinged arches the in that three hinged arches we are going to analyze parabolic and circular arches similarly in the two hinged arches we are going to analyze the parabolic arches and circular arches and temperature effect on three hinged arches and two hinged arches and rip shortening effect so these are the topics i am going to explain so we are going to analyze all these types of arches so the term analysis okay so i am saying term analysis that means we are going to find out the support reactions okay support reactions at the supports we are having hinged supports okay and the next one is to calculate the moment in the arches so sorry moment in arches at various points so various points are given and at that point we have to calculate the moments and the next one is to calculate the normal thrust and radial shear normal thrust and radial shear so these are the four parameters we are going to find out in the analysis of arches so the support reactions are uh, when coming to the hinged support the support reactions will be one vertical reaction and one horizontal reaction and moment in the arch is calculated by using uh, some formulas that i will explain in the upcoming videos and that normal thrust and radial shear so the normal thrust i am denoting it as a p and radial shear as f in some textbooks the notations may be different but the procedure and the formulas are almost similar so normal thrust means i am denoting it as p radial shear is i am de denoting it as f so we have to calculate the normal thrust and radial shear normal thrust and radial shear at various points in the arch so before going to the analysis first of all we should know the important terms that are used in the arches so this is an arch and we are having at a support one at one end and another support at another end if you take three hinged arch a support at the center okay this point is known as crown or it is also known as apex okay this is an arch and two supports so let this be a and this b and c so the total span is i am denoting it as capital l and the central rise that means if we are having total span at l by 2 from either of the supports the total central rise is yc so in some textbooks as i have said earlier in some textbooks that is denoted by h so whatever may be the notation the formula is same okay at half of the distance that means this is l by 2 and this is l by 2 so overall span is l and l by 2 at l by 2 distance we are having central rise yc which is given in the question so this is known as crown or apex okay this is the arch in which we are having support set same level sometimes you may have an arch which is in which the support is at different level so you may have one support here and you may have one support here and three hinged arch you may have another support here okay another hinge at this point so the supports are at different level so in such cases the total length will be same capital L so at this point so up to here the length is capital L so but when analyzing the arches we may have to assume that the supports are at same level so if the supports are at same level then the total length 
is taken as L0. This is the imaginary length. Actual practice there won't be support here and the support is only at up to this point. But while for just for analysis we have to assume it for that the supports are at same level and the distance if the supports are at same level is taken as L0. The L0 will be always greater than L. Okay, that we should find out by using the formulas. Okay, so these are the two types of arches. This is supports at same level, supports at different level. So this is about the introduction of, of the arches. Thank you.